Servus Mena, it's Red Pill Germany again. Today I want to report to you about a major discussion that has been going on in Germany since the beginning of May for almost two and a half weeks right now. Believe it or not, the German nation was debating one more time whether or not we should nationalize our economy, seize private property from the citizens in order to introduce socialism to Germany. Yes. So if you are watching this and listening to me from another continent, maybe from another nation, you might be surprised. You would think normally I would guess that Germany would discuss about some other topics right now, some more pressing issues maybe. But no, we actually discuss about whether or not we should introduce socialism again to Germany. So like I said in a previous video, May 1st, uh, May Day, Labor Day, is a very important holiday in Germany. And it is around this day, which you could see as the analog to Easter for socialists, that a lot of people from the German labor unions and from uh, left-wing parties, they have to come out and give speeches. Normally, they don't care about the working class so much throughout the year, but on Labor Day, they have to get their asses up into the pulpit and deliver a sermon to the degenerate congregation. And it was this occasion that Kevin Kühnert, the boss of the Young Socialists of Germany, that is the youth organization of the Social Democratic Party of Germany, used to give an interview to a German newspaper in which he stated that socialism needs to be introduced rigorously in Germany, that capitalism has to be overcome by collectivizing property and wealth in Germany. So in this video, I want to tell you briefly what Kevin Kühner, the self-proclaimed lover of men, uh, said, what the echo was in German society, so what certain voices from Germany said about that, who backed him up and who disagrees. And in the end, I want to tell you what I make out of all this. And he even went into great detail and he said that BMW, for example, which is a stock company, it has shareholders, it belongs to the shareholders, should be taken away from these shareholders and should be given to the German state. So he said that the only thing that he isn't sure about is actually the name, if it should be called a public automotive factory or it should be a automotive co-op or if the collective decided that BMW in its current form is no longer needed. So that would mean no more Beamers for Louis Marco. On another occasion he also said that people should not be allowed to own more real estate or more housing area than they require for themselves to live at. That means uh, you are not allowed in his world to be a landlord. You are not allowed to own property that you rent out to other people. Of course, this would also imply that a government worker could determine what is an appropriate amount of living space for you. So if your apartment is too big for yourself, oh, you have to leave, of course. Now, that's very interesting because that's how a lot of people actually plan their retirement. But of course, there is no saving for retirement anymore when you live in communism. And why I say communism, I will explain to you towards the end of the video. I don't want to go on that tangent just now. But socialism and communism, it's not the same thing, but you can't have one without the other. So it is actually interesting to see how many people from the Social Democratic Party actually backed him up. They always started um, their sentences with, while I do not agree with what he proposes, we need to have a uh, open discussion about this and I welcome that he started this discussion. So just the fact that he was, to my knowledge, only called out really by Sigma Gabriel, who doesn't even have an office anymore really in the party, to my knowledge, uh, he is not important anymore, uh, that actually tells you a lot. So it was actually the chairman of the Labour Council of BMW, the uh, Metal Workers Union member and engineer Manfred Schoch, who said that the SPD, the Social Democratic Party, has become unelectable for the German worker. 
Of course, I agree with that. And the German worker knows that for a long time. Rest assured, Herr Schoch. Yeah? <laughs> Don't worry. The German workers know that for 20 years already. But in this regard, I think it is also very important to point out that the statutes of the German labor union still officially include the goal of a society in which key industries are no longer in private hands, but actually public property belong to the state. So if higher ups in the union and the BMW uh, labor council members are so outraged by what Mr. Kühnert said, then why don't you change your own statutes then, huh? If this stuff is still written in there, then it cannot be that outrageous in your worldview. One of the reasons, by the way, why I will never be in one of those unions. So as I said, a lot of people from the Social Democratic Party actually defended Kühnert here and they share his views. For example, a very influential guy is the head of the um, SPD in North Rhine-Westphalia, the largest German federal state. People from other uh, German federal states, SPD members there also agreed with him. So in the Social Democratic Party at least, it is not that uncommon this opinion. Bear that in mind when these democratic socialists or social democrats want to make you believe that they are actually just for a mixed economy with some welfare state elements in them. No, it has nothing to do with public health care. It has nothing to do with fixing the roads. It has to do with seizing private property and collectivizing the economy. So that already brings me to the last part of the video. So before I get all theoretical, let me say a couple of words about Kevin Kühnert. So in this context, I think it is absolutely unimportant that uh, he's a self-proclaimed member of the LGBT community. Uh, I think he rather conveniently had his coming out in 2018. Uh, <laughs> maybe he was afraid that uh, his job would be given to a woman of color, so he had to come up with something. No, but in this context, it is much more important that he never seriously worked in the free market, obviously. I mean, he worked in a call center for three and a half years, I guess. But other than that, he just basically flunked out of university, even though he was studying one of the easiest subjects there are, communications. And um, then later he started uh, working for a Turkish MP. Yes, we have Turkish MPs, actually. And uh, then um, he started uh, studying politics, which he discontinued. So he basically never worked in his life and he doesn't have any finished education whatsoever. He didn't do an apprenticeship. He didn't go into the trades. He's not interested in that. He wants your money, your tax money. So he is the prototype of young career politician who has no other options. And you do not only find this in the Social Democratic Party, the Green Party and Angela Merkel's CDU is full of types like that. And I bring this up because it is important. It is exactly how the powers that be want the politicians. This is how they want their politicians. They want them to have no other options. They don't want them to just go and work again in the free market if it didn't work out in politics. No, they want them to be utterly dependent on a career in politics so that they do exactly what um, their overlords want from them. And I also had to bring up the rather useless and lazy nature of Kevin Kühnert because it is exactly those people who constantly call for socialism and for um, nationalization, collectivization and so on. And they never want to actually start a co-op or a commune with their buddies. No, they want to wait decades until people who work hard in the free market accumulated wealth or build up a great company in a very competitive and productive way and then they swoop in and they want to reap the benefits and just take it. So the thing is and other commenters have said that in Germany actually if you had collectivized BMW 20 years ago, it wouldn't make those profits now. It would be like uh, what we had in Eastern Germany, the Trabant. Yeah? That was the, the icon of the Eastern uh, Soviet German car industry. And uh, you had to wait uh, for several years until you actually got one. 
the price was not so much the problem it was the availability and in the end they couldn't even provide spare parts for it or replacement parts this is how weak disorganized and uh, just unproductive the eastern german economy actually was and i say that not to bash uh, eastern german people eastern german people are just as intelligent and as hard working as westerners it is just the system of a collectivized economy that just drowns every little spark of creativity and every little ounce of motivation that people have because if the workers don't profit from working harder than the others well they're not motivated to work harder and everyone does the bare minimum because they all get paid the same anyway and this is why BMW would not be a profitable company now had it been collectivized decades ago. It would probably not even be around anymore. Just look at the automotive industry from the UK. It is a very sad story actually and even as a German I say it saddens me that the once proud Leyland Motors just um, not only because of nationalization of course but to a great degree it was that that was the reason for the decline of the british automotive industry it's a fascinating story and a sad one in my opinion you should read about that if you're interested in industrial history and this is why it is utter nonsense when greedy socialists work shy elements they say stuff like oh look bmw makes uh, this amount of money every year if we nationalize it then this profit would be in the public hand that is not the case because if you nationalize it guess what it doesn't make a profit anymore maybe still in the first or the second year but then you kill every little bit of productivity that's still in the company and they turn into trabi the free market doesn't work like a government office this is why socialism only works in the first couple of years when the spoils of capitalism can still be distributed among the revolutionary classes let me paint you a picture capitalism is an organism that um, actually is very good at creating wealth and um, that would mean body fat uh, it eats a lot and it creates a lot of calories that it stores in the form of body fat then this organism gets a parasite it's the socialists and eventually the parasite will kill the host and for a certain amount of time the parasite can still live in the host body by feeding off the flesh of the carcass but the um, organism the host organism is dead so he doesn't form any new cells anymore and then after a while when the carcass is completely consumed then the parasite will also die and this is just a matter of time because socialism in and of itself cannot create wealth at least not to the degree that is necessary for leading a civilized life with any form of dignity and then if there is nothing to redistribute anymore and you cannot motivate people to work because uh, they don't have any personal gain from working then you actually have to whip them and to force them with violence to continue to work and what you then have is basically a prison or a slave colony and this is what socialism actually turns into every time a big slave colony and not into communism which is the classless society and let me get a little bit theoretical right now because a lot of people lately especially in the united states for example they tell you oh we need democratic socialism and uh, socialism look at germany look at the denmark and sweden uh, the wonderful socialist countries and actually i think it was some person from denmark i don't know they replied no we're actually not socialist countries we have a wealth state yes sure uh, but our wealth is created by operating on the free market so these are definitely not socialist countries and the welfare state is not a sign of socialism actually the welfare state in germany was introduced by otto von bismarck and he was a monarchist he is called the iron chancellor for a reason uh, he was not a socialist at all he was a very proud monarchist and a supporter of the kaiser so having some form of welfare state doesn't mean it's socialism what socialism actually is there is a clear definition for it and don't get fooled by wikipedia wikipedia wants to tell you oh there is no clear definition of the word socialism no that's false there is a clear definition 
socialism is defined as the dictatorship of the proletariat um, over society and this is in nature in by its very definition by its very nature it is only a transition phase it is not a destination it is not a steady state in the theory of communism it is a preparation phase and a prelude an overture to communism it is a stage uh, in which by peaceful means if they're powerful and numerous enough or by militant means if they are only a violent minority but by any means necessary private property is seized from the owners and is um, given to the revolutionary classes and uh, sometimes you have to exterminate then also the people who are more intelligent like in China and in Russia right and uh, who uh, have one cow too many for example and are therefore an enemy of the people or if you have the numbers you can just vote in socialism yeah so it's not clearly defined as violence but by whatever means necessary you take over the power in society and then you end private property basically and then of course communism the utopian society without any differences in class or whatever between people anymore it cannot be reached overnight no you need the socialism period to be there for a certain amount of time before you can actually reach this uh, utopian state of communism so and this is important to know so socialism can never be seen independent of communism like the caterpillar that is destined to turn into a moth socialism can never be seen as anything but a preparation stage for communism so don't be fooled if anybody wants to tell you that socialism is an alternative system to communism or it has nothing to do with communism no it is the pre-stage it is the preparation phase of communism and socialism would be utterly pointless without the goal of communism okay let's come back to Germany so do I think uh, that um, there is a real danger of um, collectivization in Germany right now no my answer is no I don't see a majority for these kinds of ideas sure there are some radicals who want to try to do something here but um, the major population in Germany the workers and the middle class they pay a lot of taxes they work hard and they have no interest whatsoever in uh, these crazy ideas in the political class I think it looks a lot different in the media and in the political class there is a broad um, maybe not majority but a very large group who is in favor of these ideas to a certain degree uh, some to a very large degree actually but it is much more than in the average population so the average population actually wants nothing to do with crazy ideas like that and it is only the most uh, weak the most uh, dumb and the most work shy unproductive losers of our society that actually for <laughs> well very very uh, understandable reasons have any kind of sympathy for these ideas it is basically the philosophy of the eternal loser who is so entitled and narcissistic that he doesn't want to be of service to his fellow man and who wants others to work as slaves for him. He wants to have the benefits without the work. And this is an attitude that is um, seen by most Germans as utterly disgusting. This is actually why communism never really worked in Germany and why Lenin had to go to Russia. Um, he was actually very disillusioned and very angry at the German proletariat for just not being revolutionary enough. They just want their welfare and their health insurance and their retirement and their pensions, but they really don't want to burn down the parliament. <sighs> All right, thanks for listening. Check out the descriptions down below and uh, I hope that you have a fine day wherever you may be. Servus, Kameraden!